We're talking Barbie, full review, spoilers. Smash subscribe if you like us. Let's get into it. Barbie from director Greta Gerwig is a fantasy comedy based on the iconic doll from Mattel. Margot Robbie plays stereotypical Barbie who leaves Barbie land amidst an existential crisis. When Barbie and Ken learn that the real world does things differently, the race is on to either dismantle or save the patriarchy. As of this recording, it has a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. Barbie's runtime is one hour and 54 minutes. I didn't hate this movie, but it, it was a freaking mess. Uh, I mean, like, I don't think it was a mess. And I think that I've, I've seen your initial thoughts. And I, I think that you're being a bit harsh on it. I thought it was... Stereotypical Ken. I thought it was a pretty good movie that had its flaws. All right. What are its flaws? Because my main issue is that it took a bite of maybe a hundred apples when it should have really gone all the way through the few that it did really well. I thought that when it was Barbie and Ken in Barbie land trying to figure out their stuff, all the Barbie on Barbie, Ken on Ken interactions made me laugh. And I thought that those were great. And tying in the other stuff like America Ferreira's character and her daughter and a lot of the L.A. stuff. I didn't need L.A. at all, except for shout out the woman on the bench. Going to make <laughs> me great. weep. Yeah. Loved that. Wanted more of that. Saw Greta Gerwig. Had to fight to keep that in. Shame on you, studios. But didn't need America Ferreira and her daughter. Didn't need Will Ferrell. Could have you like I could have done a little bit of L.A., but this movie was at its best when the Barbie characters and the dolls were figuring their stuff out. I agree with that, but I also, like, part of me wanted more of, like, Barbie and Ken in the real world because they, like, they just kind of, like, did the same joke over and over again in the real world. So, like, I kind of, that's what, I guess maybe based on expectations, I was expecting more of, like, them in the real world trying to figure things out, but it was I would say probably like two thirds of the movie is in Barbie land, which is not like a criticism because it was very campy and fun in Barbie land. I will say the like the time that it took to get to L.A. was too long. I, I think that like the first act of the movie moved a bit slow and there was a point like it was fun, but there was a point where I was kind of like, OK, let's get to the point. Let's get to a plot here. Yeah. Basically, once they left Barbie land, it became bad elf. And I really didn't like and it, people have said, oh, that's just because Will Ferrell is in it. No, like even before Will Ferrell was introduced, which I don't I mean, I we all love Will Ferrell didn't need his character at all. I thought that and we'll get to this. All the suit stuff and the corporate stuff was just extremely heavy handed. But the running around encountering all these things in the real world was extremely elf and just not done as well as elf because elf is one of the great goofy ass movies that you're ever going to see. My biggest gripe about the real world stuff was like when they're being chased by the suits and then all of a sudden they're in the cubicles and basically like playing Pac-Man and just like it just became super, super, super goofy. I think that. It's goofiness was great when, like I said, it was them contained in their own thing. I thought, and of course this movie is an allegory, we'll hit on that in just a moment, but I thought it's bizarro dudes rock elements were the best the best parts the of best. the movie and my, i tweeted my big takeaway from the, from barbie is that it's a dudes rock movie so like if you want it to be dudes rock bait it can't like if you go into that movie thinking like I know it's Barbie, but I wouldn't hate some dude's rock. It gives you some definitely bizarro dude's rock. And I liked any of its bizarro elements. I thought that Kate McKinnon, who, of course, has uh, been taxing on a lot of us over yes, the years. correct. Yeah. Kate McKinnon, I thought, was great in this, just like she was in Super Pets. Shout out Kate McKinnon in a reduced role. I thought that she was really well, good in this. It's also like... Kate McKinnon in a like normal setting being Kate McKinnon. It's like, all right, we get it. She's fucking Kate McKinnon. But this movie was so goofy and silly that like she had her place and her character was very fitting and serve like had a service to the movie. But she wasn't making like her. She wasn't doing like the crazy Kate McKinnon voices and contorting her face and doing all the Kate McKinnon things. They, they were just like, yo, you're, you're going to look weird. <laughs> who's kind of broken. Yeah. You got stuff on your face. Yeah. And Kate McKinnon was like. Uh, I'm a great comedian. Bet. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. And she rocked it. I thought a lot of the supporting cast, uh, 
for all intents and purposes, were fine for how they were used. I was disappointed in the lack of uh, Alexandra Ship and the lack of Issa Rae for sure. Issa Rae rocked. Way. She rocked because Issa Rae is always going to rock. So why was she so limited? I thought. I mean, no, you only got you got only can only pass the ball around so many times. Yeah, and Margot Robbie. Uh, famously attractive person uh was as noted by the movie yes was was fine in it uh, uh i do want to push I think she back was really good i think I want... gosling and margot robbie rocked no yes mar no i i thought that uh, that ryan gosling was replacement level oh outside that's a of, bad take he was great of, outside of the isolated dudes rock stuff i thought he, oh, i that's thought a that bad take it was He's going to get nominated for, like, Best Supporting Actor. But it was like, what do you expect from Ryan Gosling? Like, like yeah, the best, if, if and he was seen, the best. If you've seen... He's done the, like, kind of nudge and a wink, like, I'm um, taking myself a little more seriously than everybody. I mean, a million times better in, like, everything else that he's done. I thought that this was... I thought mm. he was totally, totally ordinary. Mm, and maybe disagree. that's the type of Ken that he was. Uh, let's talk about the music. Stunk the music at the the song at the end the uh, Nicki Minaj Ice Spice thing yeah favorite song in the world it's only like a minute long I couldn't Crazy believe that it. they took they took that long to introduce like the Barbie song yeah uh you mean Barbie uh, Barbie Girl yeah whatever yeah. yeah you're you might be a little did you like miss Barbie Girl did Barbie Girl happen no when? no it happened in my when okay. I was a kid yeah that was a obviously huge smash I, I thought that that song was great the Dua Lipa song was. Very disposable, very replacement level. The Ken song I thought should have been there, and there should have been a big Ken come to Jesus song. And I just think that they put it in the wrong hands. I won't bore you with the details, but Mark Ronson, who's a great producer, that that's not his sort of thing. He's not going to make that big 80s power ballad sort of song. So uh, that song could have been a lot better. Uh, when I saw who was on the soundtrack, I was like, oh, nice. We're going to get that song that's at the end the closing credits one the it girls and we ain't playing tag amazing song thought that was going to be in the movie it wasn't it was closing credits i saw that heim was on the soundtrack it was just like pray to god is on the soundtrack but it's not in the movie so things looked great yeah i don't think the they costumes sounded, were great i don't like... think they sounded amazing a lot of the jokes i feel needed to be uh, punched up but the funny jokes killed me like yeah. i had some big ass belly laughs yeah, I mean, I, I think that I got like uh, more chuckles than like belly laughs. But uh, I mean, like, I, I do agree that some of the jokes needed to be punched up, but I thought that it was a funny movie. I think that I laughed harder at it than a lot of people who liked it more than me. Because I've said that to a few people where I've said, like, the few laughs I got were big. And people were like, oh, no, I didn't get any big laughs. Everybody said they just chuckled throughout it. Yeah, I got a lot of chuckles. I thought the ad in the middle of the movie made me laugh big Oh, time. that was great. Yeah, yeah, that was hilarious. And uh, Mojo Dojo Casa House. Yes, so Love good. that. <laughs> what are they called? Uh, Brewski Beer? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all of those things made me for real laugh. It's just that a lot of the time that it's spent going back towards the America Ferrera stuff, I thought, took away from... Here are the parts of the movie that's working. We must get to the femininity of it all. And that, yes, this movie is an allegory and it's going to take on the patriarchy. I'm wondering if anybody who's taken issue with this has seen a Greta Gerwig movie. <laughs> uh, my issue with this, with the femininity of it all, is that it was too heavy handed and not as well masked as Greta Gerwig will do. And it wasn't very clever in how she did it. I think that not to speak for her, I'm assuming her goal was to get the point through to even the dumbest of people. But as a result, you lose some of the clever stuff and a lot of it being funny. Like I thought that the unbrainwashing scene initially, I thought was mocking a certain type of Twitter user. And then I was like, oh no, like they're actually doing this trite thing. The dudes playing acoustic guitars, a lot of it was just so trite. And Didn't has love been the ricochet done. shot to Matchbox 20, I'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of it has, although shout out Indigo Girls, a lot of it was just so trite and super heavy handed. I put it this way to a, a friend this movie, for a lot of it, was a white girl with a ukulele, and I wanted her to have a knife, <laughs> I wanted her to have a gun. I wanted them to really fuck shit up. And instead, it was just a kind of uh, patriarchy 101, entry level, kind of uh, very yeah. first grade sort of thing. I and that's what especially makes me think if you were bothered 
by oh, the yeah. messages in this movie, you are as soft as they come and possibly have not been alive for more than 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, like, that's it was a pretty inoffensive movie. Yes. <laughs> like, and, yes. And, you know, it, it, it tackles the patriarchy, like, in a inoffensive way. Like, it's... They the patriarch well, the, the Ben Shapiro thing. Doing it. No, definitely not. But like, I also think that that's like that's fine because it doesn't have to be like this big attack on the patriarchy. Mm. It's it's just like a movie that presents kind of both sides, like the struggle of like the like the images of like men and the images of women and like what they kind of deal with. And that's why like the Ben Shapiro tweet is like this movie says patriarchy unironically more than ten times. It's like, yeah, because like... You it, mean in one line by one but, character yeah, exactly. who just learned the word patriarchy <laughs> yeah. and is excited about the word patriarchy? Look, I just did it twice in describing what this person was doing. It was like, it did not feel very preachy. Like, it, it felt a little bit heavy-handed, yes, but like not preachy. Yeah, n- not preachy until, I mean, once it got to the America Ferrera part when she started doing the thing, which is... But even that wasn't preachy. It was just like, yeah, we kind of know. Like, this has been kind of regurgitated a lot. I thought when she was doing... And they're like, we have to be smart, but not too smart. I thought that because that's a speech that's been given by uh, a bunch of people who have been like mocked for how trite that yeah. that line of thinking is. And I was like, oh, I, I again, I thought that they were making fun of that. And then I was like, oh, no, they are really just trying to be as surface level, get the message out to as many people as possible, which you do have to consider. This will be our first time in our in this review doing it, that a lot of children are going to be seeing this. So maybe children uh, haven't heard some which, of these things before. I think this is rated PG-13. It's rated PG-13. For what? Uh, they bleep out the one swear word. Margot Robbie's too hot. <laughs> and they there was a lot of discourse. This movie easily could have been PG. Yeah, I mean, it, it had... Again, it it had very bad version of Elf vibes to it, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Elf was PG. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that Elf was was PG. Although they burp a lot in that movie, so <laughs> who knows? Uh, okay, let's do positives and negatives. Positives for me looked amazing. Uh, I think that this was Greta Gerwig's most ambitious film. We'll talk about it later if you're listening to the full episode of this, but I consider this to be her reputation album where she just took a lot of swings and they didn't all connect, but I will always respect somebody for taking as many swings as possible. Uh, what do you have for positives? I mean, positive, I thought it was just very fun and campy uh, and you know, it, it, builds, it builds a world mm-hmm. and I thought that that was uh, pretty strong. Negatives. Messy. Music was bad. Jokes needed punching up. Pacing wasn't amazing, especially in the in the first third of the movie. It was a sub two hour movie that felt two and a half hours. Yeah, it almost it almost felt longer than Oppenheimer. <laughs> my one of my things for this general episode is these movies felt identical in how long they were. Mm-hmm. And Oppenheimer famously is exactly three hours long. What are you giving it on Letterboxd? I gave it a four out of five. Ooh, okay. I, I saw that you said it's like a C grade movie. I disagree. I think it's like a B grade movie. So I always have a tough time with the. I, I famously don't like doing the letterbox thing. Don't like doing the scores and everything. Three out of five to me sounds too high. Like if I th- and I know that you say that you do, don't actually uh, equate it, it like way. scale yeah. it with the numbers because three out of five is lower than a C minus. Right. But three out of five still seems kind of high for me. Uh, I disagree. Four, four out of five for me. I'm going to give it a three out of five that feels like I'm being generous to it. If you like this, subscribe to all this. I'm sure you love this, especially if you're fans of the Barbie movie. We also got the Oppenheimer uh, review and many other reviews and subscribe to the podcast brunch.